All right, so this is the WoW Cataclysm mouse, and I've actually got uh, one of my coworkers who moved to our Ontario office helping me with this little filming session. The first thing I noticed about this guy is it's huge. So there it is next to my incredibly beat up and rugged looking G9. So you can, uh, there's, there's some distinct differences between the, uh, the, the crafted sort of uh, worn out finish on the Cataclysm mouse and the disgusting worn out finish on my old G9. So the first thing I want to show you guys and the reason I have him here holding the camera so that I can actually operate the mouse while, uh, while he points the camera at things. The first thing I notice is it's really, really large. So it's actually not, I'd say it's not quite comfortable for me to reach all of the buttons. Like I can't really reach that one. I can just barely reach that one. And if you have slightly larger hands than me, that's probably a good thing. And you'll find this mouse quite comfortable, I think. The overall shape is kind of like the Akari laser. And one of the other things that I did notice is that not everyone cares about this, but I have a hard time picking up the mouse to, to move it if I reach the edge of my mouse pad without mashing the buttons on the side. So that's something you're going to want to watch out for. If you do have larger hands, it might not be such a problem. I'm downloading the driver package right now. It's 26 megs, so I hope there's some pretty good functionality in there. And I will show you guys that uh, in a few minutes, but this is just the initial impressions after putting it on my uh, SX mouse pad, which by the way, it glides on like nothing I have ever seen before. It probably glides better on this mouse pad than my Akari Laser, my G9, or any other mouse that I have thrown at it. Tracking is already dramatically better than the original WoW mouse, which honestly I really didn't like. It's hard to quantify, but I didn't really like the feel of the laser when it tracked, whereas this one is quite smooth, quite responsive. It, they've definitely upgraded it a lot in that regard. Okay, so the first thing that the driver installation did is it updated my firmware and then it installed itself. So I've got lots of functionality here. So the first thing I want to show you guys is some of the basic features. So over here, uh, the default CPI value was at about 800. I turned it up a little bit and then I turned the sensitivity down in order to get the movement just right for me. Like I said, I love the way this mouse tracks though. It's very smooth and it glides great on the SX mouse pad. All right, so we've got the pointer speed, sensitivity. Okay, so that's all of your basic controls. You don't have quite the level of granularity that you do with a more um, Twitch FPS gaming oriented mouse from SteelSeries like the Xi or the Akari Laser, but you do have that basic stuff and it's still better than what you're gonna get with a generic mouse by a long shot. Now where this mouse really gets complicated is all of this stuff. So let's start with the colors. I wish I could show you guys this in the dark, but I don't actually have a way to turn off the lights in my office. So here's one thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to turn that down so that we can actually focus on this. There we go. So you can see the color, intensity, and pulsation. So color changes the, well, the color. So you can see I have it set to red right now. Intensity changes the brightness. And pulsation, so I'm going to show you guys like a low pulsation compared to what I had before. So you can see it actually turns off and then comes on quite slowly. So that's kind of depends what kind of a look you're going for. Colors, you have pretty much every option under the sun. So I'm going to change it to blue. There it is, blue. I'll show you guys a couple of the different colors. Uh, why don't we do green? Let's see what like a, like a bright green looks like. There's a green. Looks pretty cool. I could kind of do this all day. This is the kind of feature that I could like play with forever on a mouse. There's yellow, pretty cool. Okay, so here, I'm gonna turn that back to normal. All right, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff here as well. So here are all of the different things that we can assign to buttons. So first of all, you've got all of your built-in WoW stuff because World of Warcraft has some pretty specific rules for how you are allowed to bind actions to keys and what is considered cheating and what is not. So this allows you to just simply bind World of Warcraft actions to the mouse buttons without actually binding like keyboard keys to your mouse buttons. It is built right into WoW. You can actually configure this within game as well, should you so desire. So you can bind game commands to a, a button. You can bind change CPI commands to a button. This is cool. Check this out. CPI up, CPI down. So you can assign that to whatever you want. Most gaming mice have actually here, G9 is a perfect example, have dedicated buttons for that 
and a lot of them don't actually allow you to change them to different buttons or bind those to something else if you don't really care about changing your sensitivity. So that's a pretty neat feature that they've built right into the driver. There's also change profile. So you can uh, set a button to change your profile up, profile down, or even assign them to specific profiles. So your profiles allow you to have up to 10 different sets of bound actions to your buttons on the mouse. So if I decided, okay, well, I'm going to use like, uh, let's say these two for like profile one and two. That way, yeah, I sacrifice those two profiles, but I allow myself to bind two entirely different sets of commands to these ones, which are really more convenient to reach anyway for my hands. And, you know, two things here, two things here. So it really gives you a lot more flexibility depending on how the mouse is most comfortably used for you. So that's a pretty cool thing too. And then finally, oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Finally, custom macros, so you can create new ones. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Wow, you're not allowed to use macros in WoW. Thank you, don't show me that again. So why don't I just create a macu macro that's uh, copy paste? or rather copy, okay? So here we go. So, okay, so enter. Okay, okay, I don't have, I don't quite have it figured out how the macro recording works. So give me two seconds here, guys. All right, I figured it out. So there's a couple different ways you can create custom macros and really, I don't play WoW, so this is the functionality that would pretty much sell this mouse to me. Okay, so I've gone no delay, I've created some custom macros, all you do is type a name, just click on the box, press the keys you want, and then click OK. So I've created copy, paste, and cut. You use the convenient little chart here to say, okay, which buttons go where, and then you can just map them like this. So if I click here, and then click copy, and I can change it to whatever I want, so I want that to be a custom macro copy, then I can have that functionality with that button. So all that's really left now is to just show you guys the functionality that this enables for the average office worker. Yeah, you might look weird for having one of these on your desk in the office, but I mean, come on, okay, I've already got, you know, G15 keyboard. I have four monitors at my desk, so I couldn't look much weirder, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. So I type something, uh, testing this, all right, so I've built in uh, copy, cut, and paste to my mouse. Uh, it should be no addition. So I, okay, I hit I hit copy right now. There we are, copy, and then you know enter enter. You know you could build in like you've got so many buttons here. You could put enter. You could put spacebar. You could put anything that you use frequently. Just bind it to the mouse. So I'm gonna click this button here, and then I'm going to paste. Hee hee, that's so cool. So yeah, here you know what? Here I'm gonna show you guys real time the uh, the creation process. So new. Uh, okay, so we're gonna make it enter. I don't want any delays, okay? And then all I want is enter, and then okay. So now I'm gonna find a button that I want. So I think button number four should be pretty good for enter. Then I go over to this interface here. I click custom macros, I go to enter, uh, apply. Okay, so I have applied that to the mouse. So now what I can do is I can press enter, 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 paste. Enter, enter, paste, enter, enter, paste. And then if I want to, I can go up here. I can I can actually cut instead of uh, copying if I'm hitting the right one. It'll take a little bit of practice getting used to where all the buttons are, but then I could uh, press enter, enter, paste. So hold on, let me try that again. Cut. Oh, I don't know if the, I don't know if, oh, I may, might have bound cut wrong. But anyway, pretty cool, hey guys? So that is my overall impressions of the SteelSeries MMO gaming mouse, the new Cataclysm Edition. Basically, I think it's just so much of an improvement over the old one, which I looked at back at launch in terms of the software as well as the hardware. And uh, I actually really like this. I may just find myself replacing my uh, trusty, well-used G9 for this at work because the uh, the productivity of this just looks phenomenal. Oh yeah, not to mention there's memory on board so you can save your profiles and carry them around with you. Pretty sweet. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computers and gaming hardware videos.